Isaac Saracen is a skilled hacker formerly employed by British Telecom Sprint. With his health failing, Isaac did the only thing he could think of. He ran. He found a haven in a working class district of the city known as Little Russia. There Isaac took on a new name, Ishmael. Within hours of his arrival, he was embroiled in the affairs of a brutal member of the Mediza organized crime family known as Leo. Convinced by a longtime friend, Frankie, to flee from his commitments to the Mediza family, Isaac found himself hunted by the ruthless Leo. On a rooftop, far from witnesses, Leo murdered Frankie. Only through the use of his skills as a hacker was Isaac able to drive Leo off. Now wounded, alone, and far from help, Isaac depends on the kindness of strangers. What do you do when the only way to save those you love is through the use of proxies? ColbyJack.net is proud to present Firmware Proxy by Colby Tracks. 31. I dozed for a few hours. A dreamless sleep, wordless and empty, enveloped me. When I was awake, time meant nothing to me. One moment was the same as the next, a long procession of now strung like pearls on a string. It was just before dawn, according to my Apemba Nulls clock. It was 6.30 in the morning during the season of short days and long nights, when I surprised myself with the sound of my own voice. What do you mean? My voice came to my ears cracked and shaky. I had no idea what caused my outburst. Was it in response to Ferran or Fatima, or some dream I couldn't remember? Words were back, and with them a need to see what damage Rama's attack had caused. I bounced my connection around the country, through a series of proxies and switches on seven continents to its exit point at the Red Square. From there I hopped across the pond to Europe and the data storage unit maintained by the Gnomes of Zurich. The data storage unit was nearly full with every packet and log entry that had passed through the Red Square switch in the last couple weeks. I shuffled through the endless directories of data until I found the Red Square's log. The log had continued recording events until the very end. It was very interesting to watch the traffic increase on the log, every second of log doubling in size as Rama's attack on the Red Square switch intensified. I strolled through a virtual mile of events in the last second before the log ended. That was interesting. The log should have restarted when the switch came back online. I checked my route. I was patched through the Red Square. The switch obviously was up and working. Why hadn't my log restarted with the switch? It should have. I logged out of the Gnomes of Zurich account and shifted my attention back to the Red Square switch. I poked around the guts of the switch. The data stream from the nesting doll was still there, still sending its video endlessly to Karina Data Hosting, a company I knew had to be run by the infamous hacker known as Maspa Anna. The second, lesser data stream was there as well, seeming to idle in the background as it always did. Nothing was different in the switch. I dropped in on the Red Square camera network and watched an elderly janitor in a pakol listlessly mop the nearly empty bar. The alley camera showed two bearded men in long gray chapons unloading a truck while heavy snow fell around them. Cases of vodka, wine, and beer carried into the Red Square with the efficiency of a naval crew resupplying their guns. I must have dozed for a moment. The alley was now empty the tracks of the truck almost totally obscured under a layer of thick snow. A pair of bartenders worked behind the bar, rotating bottles, wiping down glasses, and updating the inventory database. A dim sliver of light shone on the floor. Dawn had come. On the table next to my monitor sat my breakfast. The scowling man who normally brought it was long gone. I ignored the food. I had no hunger. I had no thirst. I opened the application which controlled my logging of the red square switch. I scanned the setup details. Everything seemed right. It just wasn't working. I flipped through the configuration menus, reading each line very carefully. It wasn't until I was on the last page that I found the issue. I had forgot to set the program to start with switch reset. Such a stupid mistake. With all that had gone wrong with my head lately, it was a miracle I was even able to do half of what I knew I was capable of. 
I set the switch to the correct position and saved the settings. I checked back with the gnomes of Zurich and saw that the log had started again. Nice. It was too bad I had lost any record of Mosbana resetting the switch. From the way she had just reset the switch, without changing anything, I knew catching her would just be a matter of being more patient than her. She was showing herself to be less of a threat than her reputation claimed. I would set another trap, and she would step into it. I relaxed a bit. The relief that my monitoring systems were in place and working properly was short-lived. Suddenly, my screen froze. My Opemipo Null froze mid-cursor move. My hand continued to move. The cursor just stuck there. I applied the ancient three-finger keyboard salute to reboot the Opemipo Null. Nothing happened. I hit the key several more times. Nothing continued to happen. Then a window opened on my screen. A simple black text window with a large flashing cursor filled the entire desktop. I heard the Apemipo Null speaker crackle to life. With each flash of the cursor, the sound of crashing waves came to me. Whoosh! 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 The sound from the speakers rolled over me. I tried to rise, reach the power button on the Apemipo Null. My body wouldn't respond. My arms were like lead, my legs unfeeling stumps. I remember tasting metal. Whoosh! Whoosh! Oh, how interesting, the Opempopo Null said in a hard robotic voice. I tried to reach for the Opempopo Null. Whoosh! Whoosh! Tarsus is Ishmael. Or should I say, Tarsus is Isaac Saracen. I recoiled back. How did she know? Whoosh! Oh, don't look surprised. You should see your face, mighty braggart, brought low by little old me. The robot voice carried malice. How that was possible, I have no idea. She could see me. How? I stared at the Opemipo Null and saw the answer. The face of the Opemipo Null faced me, and on its face sat the unblinking eye of its camera. Mosbana had me. She could see me, and I could do nothing to stop her. Whoosh! Whoosh! Tarsus, I have a question for you. Did you really pull off all those hacks on your own? Or were you taking credit for BTS decisions? I tried to type out an answer. Whoosh! Whoosh! Don't type. I can hear you. I have root on your pretty little toy. You know what that means, don't you? She taunted. I did the hacks, I croaked. Whoosh! Whoosh! Don't lie. I know you are lying. You want to know how I know? Of course you do, she taunted in an artificial voice of pure malice. Whoosh! I know because all the gear in your head is talking to your oh-so-nice toy. And when you lie, your heart rate spikes. Now tell Baby Anna the truth. I tried again for the off button. It was out of reach. Why was it so hard to reach it now? You're messing with the shunts, aren't you? I realized too late. Whoosh! Whoosh! Of course, my boy. You should see how high your blood pressure is and how low the shunts are set. If you tell the truth, I promise to turn them back on. You might live long enough for Leo to shoot you, Mosbana said with mock sincerity. The metal taste rose on my tongue. I could feel the aphasia shark coming. I didn't have much time. Any hacks against BTS or its subsidiaries were done by order of my superior. Everything else was me. All me, I cried. Whoosh! Whoosh! So it was all you when the Uslimsk servers were brought down, she asked. What was she getting at? Why did she bring this up? There were over 3,000 hackers involved in that operation. An operation to put one of the worst child porn services in the world out of business. There were a lot of us involved in that operation, I answered. 
The aphasia shark was circling me in tighter and tighter circles. Whoosh! Whoosh! I am sure there was, Mospa Anna's mechanical voice asked. But you and some others were the ringleaders, right? Words were close to failing me. I struggled through my answer. There was me, Rama, Huntington, and Apseed. We were the ringleaders. Everyone else were shock troops tasked with tying up bandwidth and security resources. Whoosh! Whoosh! Truth at last. I won't forget what you said. Little things are the things which count the most. Maspa Anna's mechanical voice trailed off for a moment. Whoosh! Whoosh! Your shunts are back up, like I promised. Wouldn't want you to die before Leo gets a chance to thank you for all his problems. The metallic taste shifted back on my tongue, fading as rapidly as it had come. I tried once more for the Apemapo Null. Whoosh! Whoosh! Amazov Catfish Farms! <coughs> Never would have guessed you for an Abedini lover. Enjoy your next hour. It will be your last. Mosbana taunted. A second later, I hit the power button, shutting down the Apemapo Null and my connection to Mosbana. Leo was coming, of that I was sure, and here I was plugged into a wall like a toaster. A toaster's whose warranty had run out. Firmware Proxy is the second book in the Firmware Pentology. That's five books, if you must know. It begins moments after Firmware Hijacked ends. So if you haven't heard or read Firmware Hijacked, this would be a good time to head on over to colbyjack.net and either download the podcast on the audio side, read the episodes on the visual side, or download the Colby Jack Sunday Reader Issues 1 through 20 in your choice of either EPUB or Mobi. Firmware Hijacked and Proxy are both available in ebook versions from our store at shop.colbyjack.net, amazon.com, and Barnes and Noble. Just search for Colby Tracks. That's C O L B Y T R A X. I'm the only one. A complete audiobook version of both Firmware Hijacked and Proxy is available for download through our shop as well. If you don't need any stuff, but would like to support our work, drop on by colbyjack.net and hit the pretty little donate button conveniently located on the right-hand side of the blog roll. If you're on a smaller screen, the button will be found at the bottom of the page. Firmware Proxy is released under a Creative Commons, non-commercial, attribution, share-alike, 3.0 license. Do what you want with it, just don't sell it and always tell people where it came from. If you receive this from a friend and want more information about ColbyJack.net and our split personality website, just drop on over to ColbyJack.net and select either the audio or visual side. The audio side carries our podcast, while the visual side carries our writings. Whichever side catches your fancy is fine with us. We're of two minds about the whole thing anyway. If you want to get social with me, I do mostly Twitter. So if you do the tweets and want to follow me, I'm ColbyTracks. Spelled the same as above. C-O-L-B-Y-T-R-A-X. We could sing that all night long. Thank you once again and have a wonderful week.